Okay, so in the previous video we worked on color and texture as well as inking our girl to get her to pop nicely right off the page. And I also taught you how to do metallic silver shoes. Now for this video I'm going to show you some mixed media techniques so we can do the sparkly sequin dress as well as finishing with diamond earrings. Alright, so let's take a look at some different dress variations. So far what we have is we have a sheer top with some binding and then we have a silk under layer with some more sheer on top. Take a look at the white dress here and what they've done is they finished the dress just like we see now and then somebody comes in afterwards and starts putting in all of this hand beading and applique. But you'll notice that all the beading here is going on after the garment is sewn together. So they're able to come over the tops of seams as they go. All right, so now on this dress, basically what they have is there's the same sheer going up into her chest area and binding around the neck and the arms. And then they have flowers. So in this instance, you would be drawing these different kind of flower petals with little shadows and everything all along going from her neck and shoulders all the way down into the bodice seam area. Now this dress is fairly simple. So we basically have the bodice is just solid sequins and then the dress is just the silky. So going back to when we were making a silk dress, you just wouldn't do the sheer layer on top and you would finish it with the color pencils and ink it out to do what you see in the picture next to it. This one also is a great example where the whole entire dress is sheer for the outer layers. And then it also has a second layer of basically what's the liner or silk underneath there. And then you would come in and you would start doing this applique design using your white on top. And same thing, this is a very complicated design, so you would really take your time to draw this pretty accurately, and then you'd also probably have to provide some kind of a swatch sample or a larger drawing to show the exact types of flowers and leaves and petals that you want. All right, so for this blue dress, this is multiple layers of sheer, but they all come down to the same hem length. And then the hem of the dress is sewn up with some fishing line, so it gives it that um, swirly back and forth look to it. Same thing on that one, I would do the skirt underlay. I would do very simple, no trumpets or anything. And then I would spend all of my time on the sheer layers, doing all of the trumpets and shadows, and then working on the hems as well. This one here on the blue dress, we could see this would be the bottom layer would be just the silk without any sheer on top. You can see how the trumpets have all the highlights and cast shadows. This one's another example where the whole dress itself is sheer on top of a nude colored layer underneath. So whatever skin tone you're using for your girl would be the exact same tone you would use for that under layer for the dress. So for instance, when we were coloring in solid pink here, you would be doing the same exact skin tone. And then for her skin, you would do all of the cast shadows and everything to separate the two from each other. And then on top, what I would use is I would put my tool underneath, white color pencil from the top to give it kind of that white flowy look to it. And then I would finish by coming in and doing all the applique using my white ink or white paint pens from the top. This last dress here, so basically we're looking at a white dress. And you're going to be coloring this on top of white paper. Now since it looks very silver-esque, where she's got the silver on her, um, all of the applique and the um, sequins and stuff have a silver look to it. What I would use for all the shadowing on this is I would use grays, cool grays. So I'd probably use number one cool gray and then just stack it several times to get all my different shadowing. 
And then of course when I move up into the bodice area where we have all of the patterns for the sequences, then I would grab like my silver metallic jelly roll pen and then I would use that to come in and start getting my designs, either drawing little circles and swirls or even putting dots into certain patterns. If anything got a little bit out of control, then I can always come back and knock it back down with my white jelly roll to clean some of that up. And then a few areas I might emphasize using my smallest black ink. So if I had to emphasize any kind of a particular pattern or a seam construction, I would do that on top as well. For the sheer white layer that's going over her skin, basically what I would do is I would treat it like it's a nude color at first. So that would just be her flesh tone, single layer, no shadows or highlights. And then from the front, I would have my tool behind there and my white color pencil on the front and that'll make it look like it's a white sheer on top of her skin. All right, now let's talk about the fabrics that I'm going to use for my drawing and how we're going to finish this. Now for me, what I like is I have this tool layer with a little bit of some sparkles in there and it's got a pink base to it. And basically what I've drawn here for her sleeves and the sheer going across her chest is this. Now for my bodice as well as the skirt underlay, I'm going to be using this silk fabric. Now on top of this I have a sheer layer. This sheer layer could be this all the way across. So it could go all the way from her shoulders all the way down to the bottom hem. And if that's the case then again my drawing is finished. Another variation is if I wanted to do a sheer layer for the skirt part as well as the bodice and it has some kind of a print or something on there then at this point I would come in and start to do that print repeat just on the bodice area and all the way out to all of the edges of the skirt drape. For mine what I'm going to do is this sequence layer and basically it's an even layer of sequins all the way across the fabric. So from this side to that side complete coverage of sequins. Now when I hand off my drawing to the sample room, I'm also going to give them swatches of this fabric. So for the sequins layer, I don't have to perfectly draw sequins all the way 100% across this entire layer of fabric. What I need to do is I need to do just enough so they will know that this is the sequin layer here as well as here. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them about 75% of what it will actually look like. Now with that said, what we'll do is we're going to start with our sequin layers all in the highlight area. So here's the light source coming down. We'll get all of our sequins in here. And then as the dress starts to wrap around to the shadow side, we don't have to keep going with it. Come over here to where we practiced doing some coloring and we're going to go ahead and practice doing our sequins in this area as well. Now what we're going to use is a correction pen. So basically this is when you're writing in ink and you need to white it out. The correction pen is not paint and it's not ink. The cool thing about this is after you use correction pen, you can come back and you can use color pencils and pencils and ink on top of it because basically what this is doing is it's giving you a fresh new layer of paper on top of your drawing. Now the thing you should be looking for is it should be squeezable. So whether you get this type or another type, just make sure that it is squeezable. And that's how you're going to be able to get different line thicknesses and quality as you're drawing with this. Also, you'll want to make sure that is the ball point. Now, the first time you'll use this, you'll want to just clean off the tip in case you had color from a previous project. And then you need to press down on the roller ball to get the, uh, to get the paint to start to flow. So now do a few practice ones. What we're going to do is 
Each time you push the ball down, it's delivering a drop. If you don't squeeze at all, you're going to get one certain size of a drop. And after a while, it starts to kind of dry up. So then what you'll do is you'll squeeze this as you drop on there and it's delivering the color, the white opaque. The harder that you squeeze, you're going to get a larger drop and the less you squeeze, you'll get just a little tiny drop and eventually it'll even start to dry. So you do have to squeeze a little bit. So practice doing some of these right now. Now eventually what we're looking for is there's going to be a bunch of sequins. All of these sequins, really, they're side by side by side by side. They're not overlapping each other. So ideally, you want to put dots down without them smudging and smearing and overlapping on top of each other. But at the same time, we don't have to get too crazy complicated with this. So you could just move quickly and put down a nice layer of dots. Now, if we were doing something that had a little more of a pattern to it, like a lace applique, that's when you would squeeze, come down onto the paper, and start to actually draw whatever would be your designs that you're looking for. Or potentially, your sequence should be following some kind of a path. This is how you would come in and start to do that. Now let's let this dry completely and then we're going to come back over and we're going to start doing it on our final drawing. Now what I'm going to do here is I want to tape my drawing down to the table so it doesn't move and I'm going to clear everything away except for my sequins, layer, and my pen. Alright, so be sure to clean off the tip of your correction fluid. And then, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start on the highlight side of her dress and I'm getting a nice even coverage of all of these little white dots all the way through. I'm making sure that the dots are different sizes and they're spaced differently. So be sure that you're not trying to make this all symmetrical and perfect. I'm also putting some dots on top of my ink lines from the silhouette. And then as I move into the darker side of her dress, I'm stopping. So now you can see I'm getting a really nice coverage here on the light side of her dress. Now as I drift over to the shadow side, I want to start doing less and less dots and a little bit further apart. Now when I come over here to the shadow side of her dress, basically I'm squeezing less and sometimes I'm not even squeezing at all. And I'm just getting the dots to, code, to go down here very light and simple. Now that I have a little bit of a coverage on here, I can see that up here in the highlight areas on her hip, her bust, I want to really get a lot more of a saturation on there to also make it look brighter. And then basically coming along this whole side of her dress is going to have a lot more highlights and saturation. But I don't want to get too crazy and start covering up her fingers. So in these tight, close areas, I'm kind of just avoiding some of the details. Also, I'm avoiding getting down here in this little trumpet ditch area where there wouldn't be any highlights. Now taking a closer look at this, you can see where I intentionally put some of the sparkles right on top of my ink line. Basically what this is doing is it's showing you where the sequins are turning the corner as it's sewn and turned at the top edge and some of them are sticking out. Now once I come down here to her waist area, I accidentally put a few dots right directly on the waist area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and ink that to get it nice and crisp again. Here's the area where I didn't put any sparkles because this is a crease going back away from the light. And I try not to get too many sparkles here on her fingers. And then over on this side, there's barely any sparkles at all because the spotlight's not really hitting 
this side of the dress. Now the correction fluid dries really fast, but just to be safe, I want to let this dry completely before I do anything else. Now let's take a closer look here at the sequin fabric. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this in the video, but in real life, the sequins themselves are multicolored. So for instance, the dark version of it is kind of a darker pink, even a little bit of a purpley look. And then where it's reflecting the light is green and light blues. Now I know it sounds really strange at first, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna find a blue, a green, a yellow, as well as a purple color to go along with my pink. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna get some of these glowy different colors that are coming off of the sequins. To get ready for doing this, what I wanna do is, I wanna get all my pencils nice and sharp so we can get a fine detail. So I'm gonna move my artwork out of the way so I don't get any of the color pencil shavings on top of my original drawing. When you're done with sharpening your pencils, be sure to really clean off your area well so you don't end up smearing any of this on your hands or on your original drawing. And then let's come over here to the swatch where we were practicing doing some sparkles. And separate out your colored pencils so you have some highlight ones as well as some low light ones. All right, so take out one of your color pencils. And let's put our, um, our light source on here. Now we know that the top edges is going to be all of our highlight colors. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw like little half moon shapes like this. So not a complete circle. And you'll switch between them. So for instance, if I do blue here, I'll skip a couple and I'll do another blue here. And I might skip a couple and do a blue here. And then I'll pick up another color. So I might do some yellow here and here. Skip some, do some there, do some here, over here. Now as I'm practicing doing my highlights, I'm also trying to make decisions on what looks like the original. So for instance, I don't need to have two greens. I might not even need yellow if I just choose my lightest green and my lightest blue. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep these three. I'll have my green, my yellow, and my light blue. Now let's take a look at the mid-tone colors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna color this on the opposite side of the little half moon. And what I'm doing is I'm touching the paper itself, so I'm making the white look like it's casting a shadow. This one I think is really weak, so I'm gonna just move it to the side. That one also isn't really doing anything. And I feel like the darker blue is just way too blue. It's gonna change the color of my dress. So I think for my mid-tones, if I use this darker purple, but very lightly, and then if I use my mid-tone of the pink and I can press a little bit harder, I can get some cast shadows underneath all of the sequins. And then my highlight colors, these are gonna go on top of the brand new white. And then again, it'll just be on the top edges like a little half moon shape. So these are the pencils that I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna move them off to the side. I just wanna clean off my drawing one last time. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rotate my paper like this. And I'm gonna start with using my highlights. And the highlights are gonna go on top of the white. And I'm gonna be coming here from this angle. So I'll basically just start here at the bodice and all along this sh the highlight edge and I'll work my way into the dress. So you can see here, I'm touching yellow on all of the upper edges of all the different sequins. 
and I'm skipping around quite a bit because not all of them are going to reflect yellow. Now basically I'm going to do the exact same thing again with my green. I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit all of the top edges of the sequins starting from the light source in the light side of the dress. And of course, I'm going to skip around. So if I've already hit one sequin with yellow, I'm going to skip that and get a different sequin with the green. All right, let's take a look at this right side up so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. So again, our light source is here from her right side. And I'm hitting all of the top edges of the white dots coming from this angle. And some of the dots, I'm going to leave them pure white, and some of them already have yellow. So I did yellow first and green second. Now also, yellow is lighter than green. So I'm getting yellow closer to the light source and green as I'm getting deeper into the dress. For our third highlight, this is the darker one. So this is the blue. I'm still going to be hitting these top edges of the sequins, but I'm going to be more focused now in the shadow areas of the dress and a little bit out here and a little bit underneath her hand. Now when I do the blue, it's going to be very dominating because it's a darker color. So I'm going to press lightly and use this one a lot more sparingly. So out here in the highlight area, I am getting just a few little spots where I'm putting this blue in, but not too, too much because I don't want to make them start to look darker. And we're getting a really beautiful tritone color, which is exactly what's going on with the sparkles that are hitting the highlights. All right, so, so far what we've done is we hit some highlights on all of the top edges of the white dot sequins. And also we've left some of the dots pure white so they're really sparkly. Now what I wanna do is for my two mid tones, I'm gonna to come in here and I'm gonna start giving these little sequins what looks like cast shadows. An easy way to think of this is back when we did the white dress shirt with jeans and she had the white buttons on top of the white dress shirt and all we were doing was giving the buttons each their own little cast shadows so you could see them but you didn't have to draw a complete circle all the way. Now that's exactly what I want to do here on her dress and the light source is here on this side so we're going to start on the opposite side. Now since I'm right-handed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper this way so I can start doing little half-moon cast shadows for all the different sequin dots and working my way through the shadow side of the dress. Alright, so let's take a really close look at this. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch between these two different midtones to give my sequins a cast shadow. I'm not going to color on top of the white. I want to leave it white. So I'm going to give it a cast shadow. So for instance here on the paper where it's kind of the darker pink, I'm going to come in here and I'm coloring on the paper this little half moon shapes to give the sequin a cast shadow. Then when we move over here to where the paper is a lot lighter, I'll switch to my lighter midtone and I'll give this sequin a cast shadow. Now, not every sequin should get a cast shadow. Some of them, none at all. So you're just going around, you're switching between your two different shadow midtones and you're hitting some sequins and you're ignoring some of the sequins. All right, let's start here at the bottom corner of her hem. 
I'm starting with my darkest for my cast shadow midtone. And what I'm going to do is I'm only giving my sequins little cast shadows on the areas of the paper where it's a darker pink. Now that I've covered all of the darker areas with the darker cast shadows, I can come into the lighter areas and get my mid-tone cast shadows. Now at this point, you can get a really good sense of there's the silk dress underneath and then we have the sequin layer on top. And then of course the sequin layer is a little bit see-through so you can see her leg skin popping through right there, her arm, her wrist bone, and her fingers over here. So one side of our dress has a whole bunch of sparkles because the spotlight is hitting that. And then over on this side of the dress, there's a lot less sparkles but there's still sequins here in the shadow areas. And what we could do is we can come in and just hint that those still exist by giving them a phantom look. So I'm gonna use my two darker mid-tones and I'm gonna come in here and wherever there's an empty space where I don't have a white dot, I can just start to hint that there also is some cast shadows from the sequins that you can't see reflecting back towards your eye. Now as you're doing this, you're going to want to do half moon shapes showing the cast shadow from the light sources over here. But you don't want to do perfect half moon shapes and everything is in a row or else it's going to look like some kind of scale print or something strange. So make sure they're different sizes and you're drawing them lighter and darker and uneven as you go. And then that'll look more natural to what's going on with your fabric. And now here where I have the lighter paper on mine, as well as out in the sheer areas, I'm gonna get my phantom shadows here with my mid-tone pink. Now here's our area where we had a little bit of a trumpet on the shear layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a slight little cross hatching with my mid-tones just to show that that's the shear layer folding back in space. And then I have another one that's over here as well. If you needed to show some more trumpets on the main outside layer, you could come in here and start to throw just a few more little trumpets and cast shadows as needed. For me, I'm gonna just keep it as it is because I don't want this drawing to get too complicated looking. Now that we've gone through and we've given a little bit of shadows for the sequins that are not reflecting light, you can tell that this particular fabric goes all the way across the full dress. One last thing that I'm noticing, I forgot to come in and give her knee caps just a little bit of definition. So I'm gonna use my 005, and I'll come in here and I'll just lightly show some of that knee cap. Now I'm gonna to switch to my size one ink. And since her right leg here is going back into space, we wanna give this a little more of a cast shadow. So I'll just do a very basic cross hatching on here. All right, let's clean off our area and we'll take one final look at this. All right, so taking a closer look at this, we have blonde hair with hazel eyes. Oh, you know what? Um, we should throw some little sparkly earrings on here. Let's do that real quick. Down here where we did our gray swatch to practice for doing the shoes, 
Let's go ahead and try a couple little diamond earrings. So take out your correction fluid. And one of them, let's go ahead and do where it's a diamond shape. And you're drawing this using little dots and you don't want to cover the whole thing. And next to that, let's do another one where it's more like a teardrop. And we'll let that dry completely before we move on to the next step. Now once it's dry completely, I'm going to come in here and on the upper part, I'm going to just throw a little bit of yellow in certain areas, but I'm also leaving white. And then since the dress was pink, some of the pink is going to reflect back onto the earring. So down low here, I might put a little bit of some pink inside of it. But also, I still want to keep some white on here to really show that it's a diamond earring. Now let's come in with our 005. The edges of a diamond will be smooth, but since it's cut to have all the different angles, I still like to kind of draw it a little bit edgy and kind of cut feeling as opposed to perfect smooth lines. Now a larger one like this would also probably have some kind of a face on it. And then you might even throw just a few little cross hatches just to show that there's some cut angles. And then connecting back to her ear, you can decide if it's a few little circles or if it would be a straight line. This one here is a diamond shape. Again, I'm going to just have a little bit rough on the edges, but still following the diamond shape. And here we'll do if it was a loop going back towards her ear. And if it's large enough, you can also show that it kind of has a flat face edge to it. Maybe just a little bit of a cross hatch. So then for doing a sparkle, you want to get an area nice and wet, and then you're just going to pull that out onto the paper to show some sparkles going out into the air. And we'll let that dry completely. My jelly roll pen is kind of dying on me. Ideally, I would want these little tiny fine lines trying to get it. And then once you have that, you can come back with your 005 and just emphasize the sparkles ever so slightly. But don't get too crazy or it'll start looking like it's furry. And usually there's like one starting point and everything is going out from that starting point. Take out your correction pen and uh, we'll reference a photo. All right, so I'm going to make sure that this is clean. Test it out first. And uh, I'll just drop down here and give a little diamond shape. And even though diamonds aren't really like a diamond shape, I'm just going to throw a little diamond shape inside of here underneath her ears. And then we'll let that dry completely. Then once it's dried, I'm going to come in here and just give it a rough outline with my 005 ink. And then just some kind of a little loop or something heading back towards her ear. I'll come in here and it's going to be reflecting some light. So I'm just going to put a little bit of some yellow up high and some pink down low. And then to make it really pop, I'll come in with my jelly roll. To do a highlight sparkle, what I'll do is I'll get an area wet and then I just want to do a few little sparkles coming out from that wet dot. So kind of like a little sunburst. And then you can come back in with your 005 
and just emphasize that little sparkle ever so lightly. So I would have liked to have gotten the, the little sparkle hits a little sharper and wider, but I think my pen is dying. And also there's a lot of color pencil here on her hair, so it's hard to get that color down on there. But that looks good enough, you get the idea. All right, let's take one last look at your final drawing. So we did a blonde haired girl with wispy, thin blonde hair. She's got hazel eyes, as well as sparkly diamond earrings. She's wearing a prom dress that has the sheer layer up here at the top with the cap sleeves and some binding. And then the main body is a silk underlay with the sequin overlay. And then all the way down at the bottom here, we have her sparkly metallic shoes. If you're looking for other rendering videos, there's one that talks all about doing the skin tones, brown hair, and a swimsuit. We also have another variation of blonde hair, white dress shirt, denim jeans. And of course, there's one for a winter coat, beanie cap, brown hair, blue eyes, glossy boots, as well as fishnets, and how do you do black or charcoal gray.